Okay, now we're getting ready to do the three angle valve job. And what I do first is go in there with the two 60 degree stones. This is the intake, and of course this will be the exhaust. I'm going to go in there and hit it with a 60 degree, and then the 30, and I'm going to show you how I place it on the valves on the head, and go from there. Okay, the next step is to go in here with the 30 degree angle. You see how shallow that that is compared to the big deep 60. Once you've uh, got the 60 sunk somewhat, then you go in here, this is your pilot, and a spring, very important. That spring lets it bounce, so you can just lightly kiss it as you're turning, and then you just touch it some. Okay. Now a lot of you are asking, okay, that's a three angle valve job and all, that's two angles. The third one is actually the 45, but some of you out there might be asking, okay, how do you tell where do you put the position at? Well, as the 60 and the 30 come to a point, they touch each other and it forms a ring. Now what I've done for years is I take a Sharpie and I mark it in three spots on the valve, kind of like a triangle. And you go in here, put the valve in, give it a few good smacks, and what it's going to do is you're going to see a line. The reason I put the black in three spots is so I can see if it's high on one side or low on the other. That tells me that the guide is not concentric. And it might take two or three times of using the 60 and the 30 to get this result, I'm just about in the same spot all the way around, which is excellent. That means I've got a very concentric hole. Now, as it is right now, yep, I'm right where I need to be. So I'll go to the next one. I'll go ahead and finish all these up. And then when I get to the 45, we'll come back and take a look at it and see what we got. Now we're down to the 45, which is the easy part. The valve job ain't the 45, which is the face and the seat and the head and the face of the valve. All the work takes place with the 60 and 30 degree stunt. This is the 45. And see, that's what we get. That seat width is going to be approximately 45 to 50 thousandths. And that's a little fatter than what I like to run them, but it's on the street and the guy's going to be driving it a long time, so I wanted to give him some longevity. All right, I'll go ahead and complete the seats and then we'll lap them in and begin our scribe for cutting the bowls. The valve job is done, and as you can see, the gray line represents the 45 degree seat, okay? Now, as I mentioned earlier, I try to get them all around 45 to 50. Let's see what we got. Fifty-four thousandths. That's pretty close. And over here on the exhaust, I got sixty-one. So I got fifty-three to fifty-four and sixty-one. Okay. Now we got that. And look at the location on the seat on the valve. It's right there at the bottom. Hold on a minute. Let me give you a better print. Excuse me, 50 thousandths. I'm, I couldn't catch it right here. It's hard for me to see. But look at the location on the seat of the valve. Okay, I'm going to try to zoom you in. I just can't get no closer without distortion. But as you can see, the little bitty gray line right there on the edge, that's the seat. Always remember that you want to place the seat as close to the edge of the valve as you can get it 
because that represents there we go there's a shot where there's the black that represents valve diameter it ain't just a matter of doing it for a particular spot by placing that seat as close to the edge of the valve you're getting the the diameter of the seat as close because now here's the trick that makes a professional set of heads from something that somebody just mildly ported okay this tool is one that I made up here in the shop and see how it's got that little bitty adjustable wrench head on the end okay that's so I can screw that out and make a setting that I can go in here and turn it's not so easy trying to do it with the camera in the way I will tell you that all right I'm going to have to retighten it a little bit hold on. let's try it now now all I do is simply turn it around a bunch of times and that blue dockum that I had put in there is going to act like a line. Now that line's where I'm going to port to. That's right, I said port. Here's the situation. And this is where most people can catch a crook trying to pass off what they consider to be a good port job on you. Okay big secret and yet it's so simple the seats made out of cast iron guys so when most people go in here and they port their bowls they're grinding soft aluminum they'll bowl right up to the seat and then you get this big bulge it's a hump that's where the seat is made out of iron they went in here and whittled their aluminum first and do the valve job and let it go there can be as much as 25 CFM right here now the correct way to do it but it's very scary because you can really mess them up if you're not careful and don't know what you're doing as you go in there you scribe that line and you take a metal cutting bit like you're cutting cast iron and lay the die grinder back at about a 15 degree angle and chop some of the seat not a whole lot because it will lose its crush its elasticity you got to blend that seat digging inward where it kisses off on the aluminum now I'm going to show you how to do this and then when you get the iron seat done then you go in there with your aluminum color cutter and roll it right up to the area you just cut with a seat because with this one finger right here I can stick my finger in the bowl and I can tell you if the person done it is a professional head porter or whether he's a jackass wannabe by simply taking your finger and running it right here and if you feel the drop where it goes in there where the aluminum is bigger of a bowl than what the seat is you just got handed a shit pair of heads what you should feel with this mighty finger of yours is virtually no transition between the iron and the aluminum so when you run your finger across you can't tell if it's iron or aluminum that lets you know that the set of heads that you got was ported by a professional that knows what they're doing because you have to go in here with your iron carbides and blend that too now a lot of these machines that they got nowadays like a surty machine or the sun nvg has got the trick cutters and bowl hogs that will go in there cut the bowl out cut out that and blend it to a radius they are really great machines i wish i had one but here's the downside to them machines they have a problem getting the seat round. I'm going to show you what I'm referring to right here in just a second. This tool right here is a tool that will scare the hell out of a machine shop, especially a place that does heads. Now, I'm speaking for the greater Nashville area within a 150 mile radius of here. And I have been in every machine shop around. They all know me and I know them. 
And not one of the machine shops that I've been to here, at least in the past five years, has this tool, and that's scary in itself. This is a central valve seat runout gauge. It uses a pilot. Now watch what happens. As it turns around, it lays on the seat, and notice where the dial is staying. This valve seat has less and under a half thousandth of seat runout. That is just perfection, I can't tell you. Because what it's doing, it's using the pilot and it's picking off of the seat and going in a circle and measuring valve seat concentricity. Now, the problem with the Surdy machines and the VG machines is that their cutter looks like this. Notice how it's got a pilot and it would have its little cutter off to the side. It's making swoops like this. A stone touches the seat all the way around. So depending on the cutter and the person operating it and how savvy he is and knows his speed, he can get it close, but nothing can beat a stone for zero. And typically what the race shops do is they'll use one of them machines to get the raw material cut and get it close. And then they'll leave it high side on the valve instead of near the bottom. And then they'll take the stone and go in there and kiss off on it to pull the seat in to get them perfect. That's what I've seen the big time shops do. But this is your tool right here, valve seat runout gauge. All stage four and five cylinder heads, every seat on this head is checked with runout. And this pair right here, not one seat was over one thousandths run out. It was below one thousandths, which is absolutely fantastic. But anyway, I just want to take a minute to show you. Lapping a head with lapping compound don't compare to that valve seat run out gauge. All lapping will do is get you remotely close. You can still have three thousandths of seat run out. And, uh still you know it looked like a valve job is done good but all you gotta do is break out that seat cut or seat run out dial and you'll mess up somebody's dreams really bad okay now I'm gonna show you the purpose of that line I'm gonna go ahead and scribe them all because now we're ready to do the finishing touches on the head blend it put the epoxy in the tubes and uh, send this man's heads back to him because the work is practically done all right, that's all for this part.